Simon. Welcome. Part 9. Jib, the vampire bar girl. Oh, she's evil. Evil. We left the last video. She's uh, toying around with John, the boyfriend's computer, his mother's bank accounts. And you know she's got her eyes on the money. This story is based on true facts. More will become apparent further down the line. But Jib, she talks to her tribe. She tells them there's money available. She's been looking after John's mother a lot more than John with the caring. She's all elderly and frail. Jib seems to be working a way out of getting her hands on that money. She takes some advice from the tribe. John's computer, it's an old PC. If she is to be able to get that money, she needs to stop John seeing the bank accounts, the bank details. And she hatches a plot. She applies for a slightly different card on the mother's account through John's name he seems to have total control on the account this will be a debit card stroke ATM with a higher limit of £500 a day withdrawal on the ATM hmm see where this is going she applies for that card knowing it will be posted to the mother's house she'll intercept the mail now there's a savings account with £50,000 in it. That's separate to the main account. She's got, The mother's got £40,000 in the main account. She's getting money every week, more than she needs to survive. So she's saving every week. Jib's very calculating. She, she's talked to the girls. She knows basically what she can and can't do. Her biggest problem is stopping John seeing what she's doing. A couple of weeks pass and sure enough that card, ATM, debit card arrives at the mother's house, Jib intercepts it. Now she's moving into vampire mode two. Hmm. She goes on to John's computer. Most days he's working nights, he's sleeping in the mornings, afternoons. She's on there in the morning. What does she do? She sets the bank account to paperless um, reports that come, statements that come through the post to paperless, so they don't come through the post. Mm, that's one good move. She then knows if she transfers money, large money out of the account, it'll start asking for confirmation and proof of everything. So she's got to be very careful what she do. She decides that she is going to buy herself a laptop and set all this up on her laptop. She goes out, buys a small laptop, and she keeps it down at the restaurant, out of sight of John. He doesn't know she's got it. She can now access all the accounts away from the house um, or when John's asleep, she used the one in the house. Mm -hmm. She starts withdrawing £500 a day with that new ATM card from the main account. If John sees this, she could probably talk away out of it. So this goes on for a couple of weeks, and he hasn't bothered looking. He goes up with her to the mums, sometimes he doesn't go and she goes on her own to take care. He's trusting her, trusting Jib to you know, interact with the mum. The mum loves Jib, absolutely loves her. So she starts withdrawing money daily. Now she knows this can't go on for long because he will spot it. So she decides after chatting with the girls, she needs an exit plan. If she's gonna take all this money from John and his mum, 
she's not going to be able to stay around. She's going to have to exit the country. So, she's had enough with him. Looks like it. She loves money more. What does she do? She transfers the £50,000 from the savings account to the bank account. Now, because it's staying in the bank and just account to account, it just asks for a password to verify, which she's got, and moves all that money into the main account. There's now over £90,000 in there. Minus a few thousand she's been taking out with the ATM. She then sends from the main account £30,000 to her or a Thai bank account through the online system and sure enough this is in the morning John's asleep sure enough verification because of a large amount of money there's a choice on the screen on the verification and one of them is a code number sent to John's mobile phone for authorization John's mobile phone is sat on the side next to her click click picks up his phone which is on silent, code comes through, taps the code in, £30,000 on its way. Now, there's still 60, 50 plus thousand in there. This is a gamble, but she's got, she knows what she's doing. She's just, oh. John goes to work that day, and she then tips a cup of coffee into the top back part of his PC again had advice from the tribe where the power supply is on the PC tips a cup of coffee in there with the PC turned on bang blows the fuse blows the power supply probably some of the internal organs of the PC gone bang why John comes home next morning she lets him sleep, she doesn't tell him. When he wakes up, she says she knocked a coffee over the PC, it's gone bang. Of course, John, he's mainly, he plays with his PlayStation on the TV. So the, the PC, it's old, he just used it for the mum's bank and bits and pieces. But he's he's upset a bit and he's, oh dear, what can we do? Um, I haven't got house insurance. <laughs> Jib says, don't worry, darling. Over the next month or two, we'll put some money together and we'll buy you, buy you a nice PC, a new one. Maybe you can play some games and things on it. We'll get you a better one. What do you think? John's, oh, that's excellent. Great. Yeah, good idea. We don't need it for now. She says, uh, we'll be fine. A couple of months. And he agrees. He's none the wiser. He doesn't know what's going on. Ah. <sighs> The money gets to Thailand, the £30,000 she sent. All okay. That's the green light. She then gets onto her laptop. A couple of days later, bang, sends another £30,000. A few weeks pass. She's still pulling money on the ATM. Every day, she's going down to her shop, Western Union, sending that £500 a day to her friend, colleague in the village, who then puts it into her bank over there. The money is coming down rapidly on the mother's account. John's not the wiser, he has no idea, the mother has no idea. She makes one last payment abroad. She empties the account except for £2,000. She's got a heart. She's leaving John and his mother a couple of thousand pounds. She's not that evil vampire she has got a heart empties the bank sends it it's going to take three days to get there it's not going to be long before John finds out what's going on at some point she could string it on a bit longer well she does for a couple of weeks but she's starting to get nervous she talks to the tribe she's got to renew the Svengen visa for the weekends they go around Europe so she does that that visa is a three-month visa 
she gets to the stage where it's just, just too much of a gamble. She can't hang around any longer. He could find out and there could be problems. She doesn't know exactly what happened in the law. And she says to John, John, I'm sorry, I'm moving abroad. I'm going, or I'm going back home to Thailand. Um, possibly the family's not well or something. She said, I'm going, uh, I'm sorry. He's devastated, absolutely devastated. He's in a rented house that he can just afford. He did this for Jib and she's leaving him. Absolutely devastated. But she does, she packs her bags, off she goes. She gets on a plane, goes to Germany. John's left there with his house. It's a week before something happens in John's mother's house, uh, the boiler or something goes bang and he needs to get some money out of the bank more than normal and he goes to the bank. Jib's in Germany. The tribes backwards and forwards they're seeing her still. John goes to the bank and it all becomes apparent what's happened. Huge shock, absolute shock but it starts dawning. He starts talking to the bank personnel he gets through to the maybe the manager and he's starting to realize he's just been taken and his mother's money's gone in the interview with the manager he tells the manager that Jib was looking after his mum with him and he'd given Jib full access to the account plus cards the manager said to him you've given her access to your mother's account without our permission <clears throat> you've got no reclaim on this you can go to the police and see if there's something you can do there for fraud but the bank is not going to help you we're not going to support you at all with this this is his broken our policies we may even close the account down there's a couple of thousand in there still he managed to withdraw enough to sort the boiler out gets that done he goes to the police he goes to his local police station sits down talks to them there's nothing they can do he handed all the tools she needed the cards access permission she's left the country there's nothing they can do for him he would actually have to prove um, all the time where she was what she was doing how she did it there's, there's going to be no way of him getting it back he would have to go and find her and get the money back he doesn't know where she she's gone he doesn't know in thailand where she lives or anything and sadly john just actually walks out the police station and says forget it and gives up he just not he's just not that sort of person he's not interested he gets out of the house he finishes the rent for the month gives it back moves back in with his mum and he just gives up on the, the money and Jibby doesn't bother doing anything oh, strange mum's money's still coming in he's now got his wage going into the house they start building their money back up slowly that's the end of John Jib's gone end of Jib she's in Germany She's moving from Germany to France to Belgium around on the Svengen visa selling her body and all these places the tribe go she's having a party having a whale of a time the tribe thinks she's amazing she's just got away with 80 90 thousand pound they can't believe it um, this goes on for three months Svengen visa starting to run out she can't renew it in Germany where she is at the time. She would have to go back to the UK or back to Thailand. She's a vampire. She sucked the life out of Peter and John. Took them both for lots of money. Not so much Peter, but took John for a lot of money, his mother. Her daughter, she's not interested. She signed the rights away to her daughter. Peter's fine daughter. John's gone back to normal with his mother. 
but she sucked a lot of their life out of them and money out of them. What a young lady. What can I say? She gets on a plane and she heads to Thailand. Back to her big house, four or five bedroom house. Her mum and dad are there, family. She's now got loads of money in the bank. She's made all that money with the gold, buying and selling. She was selling her body around Europe. Loads of money. What happens next? That is the end of Jib for now. We've gone through nine parts. I'm going to call that season one and that's the end of season one. It takes a lot of work for me to write these and put these together and get the facts and everything and film nine episodes. It's worn me out. I need to get back to doing some other videos for you guys. So I'm going to finish this as season one, final part number nine, and we will revisit Jib the Vampire Bar Girl. I believe there's probably another 10 videos, episodes to do on her. I mean, at this point, she is close on 30 years old. There's more. There's a lot more. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this uh, saga. It seems to have gone on for ages. But I've enjoyed telling it. And as I said, it was based on facts. Mm. But there's more. Don't crucify me. <laughs> I need a break from Jib. <laughs> we will revisit Jib. I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.